next day from the Redneck Garage. Well, the Jeep is done. It's painted. It's finished. It's drying up. And let's take a look at it. The only thing I'm not happy with is the hood. And I think we're going to go ahead and wet sand it before Devin takes it. Because I've still got one day of warm weather before it gets down in the 50s and 40s. And I just want to be finished with it. So let's take a quick look at how it turned out. Pretty happy overall. The bodywork turned out really nice. The sides and everything. Uh, even this that was kind of rough. He can go ahead and put his top on. I was super, super happy with it. Now the hood, if you look at it closely, it's got a gloss, but it's got a lot of orange peel on it. So we're going to be sanding that down and buffing it um, before he takes it. See if we can get that hood done today. Everything else was pretty good. Uh, all over. Tailgate. Uh, looks sharp. Okay, I'm going to be using the Trizac clear coat sanding disc. Uh, body shops use this a lot of times. You can see that it's got a foam pad on top of the other pad, which makes it softer and perfect for clear coat sanding. This should be plenty hard to go ahead and start sanding. So we're going to take a look at how it starts coming out with using this, which cuts down on a lot of the hand sanding. Um, I'm hoping it comes out nice. <laughs> You can see where that clear coat is starting to get sanded down. This is 1500 grit. And you're going to just take a squeegee and what you're looking for is you see that stippling right there. You're trying to get rid of most of that right here. And when it's good flat surface, you can pretty much tell that you're where you want to be. Now what you don't want to do is get on your edges, stay off of your edges. We'll sand a little bit more on this and see how it comes out, but I can see that it's already starting to flatten down here um, Where those little ridges are so that's what we're trying to get out of is all that little bit of ridge part of it And I always stay away from these edges Right here and right here because those are the easiest to burn through when you're buffing so I try to just avoid that So I don't have to worry about it But yeah, it's starting to flatten down like I wanted it to We'll keep sanding and see if we can get that down to a really good flat finish, get all that orange peel out, and it should buff out really, really nice. Okay, I buffed out most of the hood with my Makita um, polisher, but when I get down to the small stuff, I use my Milwaukee cordless uh, polisher because I have a little bit more control over it and you can keep from burning through stuff by using this on like little close edges and things. So I found the best uh, way to do it was with this. much better uh, I feel better it's got a good gloss on the hood there may be a couple spots that need to be touched up a little bit but you know all right so it had a couple hazy spots dull spots so I went over it with Mizerna super fine which is like the uh, really high gloss polish with a foam pad just went over the whole hood one more time washed it and uh, we'll take a look now this has been a lot of work <laughs> there we go mucho better oh uh, I gotta get a little more, more compound right there, but um, it looks like it's glossed out really, really nice. And, and for an 86 Jeep, this looks phenomenal. I'm super, super happy with the way the hood uh, buffed out. Um, you just gotta take your time with it, take a little bit off, keep working on it, buff it. And like I said, uh, I went back over it with some super fine, and it really buffed out super nice. So I'm just tickled with that. If you can see the trees in the hood, uh, we're in good shape thought we'd do just a little before and after there's still a little water on the finished product But it's starting to dry down a lot of people ask me why I shoot base clear and this is exactly the reason well first of all the base dries super quick um, And the clear dries just about as quick uh, as far as that goes <clears throat> It's got way less fumes than like a single stage if you need to uh, wet sand it and polish it out That's basically what clear coat is good for 
uh, if you've ever shot a single stage enamel metallic color and you've tried to sand it and buff it, you can forget it. If you don't get your finish right on the first part of those, um, that's toast. With the clear coat, it's very forgiving. You can play it in really, really thick like I did on the hood. Then you can go back in and wet sand it and buff it and you'll get a finish that looks like that. Very reflective. Awesome. Laid down very well on the sides. Like I said, the hood looks great now that it's buffed. Um, this is not the color I would have picked. There, it is probably furthest from the color I would have picked. Um, anything that has bodywork in it or um, you're trying to hide stuff, this isn't the color. But you know what? It's his Jeep. And Kristen, he decided on this color. Um, so there you go. He's got new seats, a new top, new everything else for it. New tail lights. I think they bought everything new for it. Uh, it's going to be a good looking truck once he gets finished with it. Uh, we were going to do the bed liner down to here, but the paint looks so good. He can go ahead and put his rails on, put the top on. If we can cut the bed liner right here and go down with it, just kind of pull the top, you know, take the top off when we're ready to do that. It may be spring, who knows. Uh, and we got to paint the dashboard, take it out and paint it. But for all intents and purposes, this thing is ready to go back to his house. Get it out of my backyard. One less thing. I guess I'll have to pick one more vehicle uh, because, as my buddy Jerry says, you got to have vehicles in your yard to be a redneck. All right, I got some cleanup to do out here. I'm drinking a little bit of wine. If nothing else, I am a high class redneck. <laughs> What's coming up in the Redneck Garage now, you might ask? Well, I've got an electrical series on the Jeep. If your Jeep won't run, it won't start, it dies in the middle of the road. Hopefully, this electrical series will help you. I've got some accessories that we're going to install on the TJ, and maybe we'll go off roading like everybody's been begging me to. I still have to put the gears in the rear end, and we're going to put U joints in the front drive shaft, just making a little bit of noise. So, we're never running out of things to do here at the Redneck Garage. Here, toast to Devin's Jeep being done. I'm Dave from the Redneck Garage. Keep turning wrenches. <laughs>